Okay, we are live. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Always Amazing. feels like such a momentous thing. Yeah, it's like, woo, finally. Well, yeah. Okay, so hello everyone. If you are joining us, thank you so much. Um, this is going to be the Middle March live show for the Middle March Buddy Read that Mary and I hosted. So we started this one in like the beginning of March, was it? Like the 8th? Yeah. Wait, was it? Yeah. March yeah. 8th, I feel like. I think so, so we started yeah. it. This is probably like the longest buddy read I've done, but yeah, it because this book is gigantic. So we've now just about finished it and have had a little bit of time to mull over our thoughts. So we're here to discuss Middle March, dive into this beast of a book, oh, and that's God. that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. First things first. Would you like to introduce yourself before we get started? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Mary from the channel Mary Among Stories. I am very happy to be a part of this buddy read. It was lovely. Um, what can I say? I love reading classics and fantasy, mostly. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. What can I say? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> love it. Okay, a couple of people saying hi. Hi, Lucy. Hello, Lucy. <laughs> and then also hi Mary. Hello. Um another Mary. How lovely. Oh my gosh, <laughs> amazing. The best people, I mean. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Hi. Lovely. So as people trickle in, hi Sarah. Um I think it would be good to maybe like briefly talk about our experience with the book and maybe yeah. give like your rating. So do you want to kick it off? Sure. I have to say I have a notebook like filled with notes oh, because wow. It is such a long book. I'm sure mm -hmm. I will forget something. But, okay, for my spoiler-free thoughts, I'm ac actually considering, like, maybe changing my rating. I did rate it three Ooh. stars on Goodreads. Yeah. <laughs> I did rate it three stars. But the more I think about it, the more I like it, I think. Okay. So it's leaning more towards, like, 3.5, maybe four stars. We'll yeah. See. Yeah. Um, I think it's one of those books that I appreciate more than I enjoy it, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes yeah. it did, yeah. Sometimes it did feel a little too long, maybe. But on the yeah. other hand, it also made it feel more complex and human and realistic. Mm -hmm. And I like how it's truly like a study, like it says in the subtitle. I think it says a study of provis provisional life. Yeah. And yeah, I could really picture that. I think it was done brilliantly. It is a very good character study. So. That's it. I appreciate it a lot and I can see how it is considered like one of those masterpieces, you know, but at the end of the day, like I didn't have the best time actually reading it sometimes. So yeah, a bit of mixed opinions, I guess, but yeah. I feel like I had a very similar experience. So I totally agree with what you've said. I am... Um... I also rated it three stars. I think mm -hmm. I'm going to stick with the three stars because I feel like a four star book would be a book that I could see myself wanting to reread and like return yeah. to. With this one, I'm like glad I've read it and it wasn't a terrible reading experience. It was enjoyable in parts, other parts yeah. less enjoyable. Um, so a decent book, but not one that I would consider like a favorite or one that I want to reread. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is this a difficult book to get through because it's very character led rather than being very plot focused. There are a few like dramatic plot lines thrown in, but I feel like it's mostly character focused. Mm. And at times those characters can be a little bit boring. There are other times when they're a lot more interesting, but it can be difficult. And I feel like a lot of people in the Discord um, had a similar experience of mm. like, not not liking it but not necessarily wanting to pick it up when they weren't reading it if that makes sense so. yeah yeah i get that mm -hmm. and to be honest like the audiobook helped me a lot oh, to go same. through it yeah like if it weren't for the audiobook i probably would have it would have taken me like maybe two more months to finish it honestly i think um, the audiobook i listened to the one on script i'm not sure about me you, too but yeah, yeah too. i feel like the narrator really did quite a good job of like making it feel more lively and yeah it just like I feel like it diversified the voices in my head a little bit more and just yeah. made it like a little bit more distinct and I started to then I feel like connect with the characters a lot more than when I was just reading it myself mm -hmm. yeah I completely agree I loved the audiobook yeah yeah 
So mm -hmm. thank God for audiobooks. They have been saving my life recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, same. <laughs> They're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you guys have also read it or not read it, just let us know your brief thoughts. Got one person here who didn't finish it. I mm -hmm. have to say there were times in the reading experience where I did think if I wasn't hosting this read along, would I have the motivation to read it? And again, nothing like terrible about the book, but just like the parts where it was less exciting. I feel like maybe mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had the motivation to pick it up if I wasn't hosting this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I have to agree with that, actually. I never felt like I didn't want to finish it, but probably mm -hmm. I would have liked maybe a lot more time to mm -hmm. truly try and, you know, dedicate more time to it because sometimes I just wasn't really in the mood for it. Um, mm -hmm. Hence why the audiobook was a lifesaver, to be honest. Yeah, but, but then again, yeah, but then again, like I look back and think George Eliot did such an amazing job with some of these themes. That's why yeah. I'm saying like, I can say it is such a great book. It just wasn't very enjoyable for me to read, I guess. But mm -hmm. yeah. I know that our friend Lucy read it at university yeah. and I feel like I could imagine that it would be a really great book to study. I read another one of George Eliot's books at university and mm -hmm. it was really interesting to read about and then like analyze it in more of a like essay focused way. Whereas yeah. it's not quite as enjoyable just to read like straight up as a book to read for enjoyment. Yeah, I agree. Also, I think I might be wrong, but I think at the time it wasn't published immediately as a full novel. I think it was published like in mm -hmm. eight separate volumes, I think. Yeah. So, you know, it wasn't meant to be, I guess, read like in a row. Um, yeah. It's kind yeah. of interesting. That was obviously the case with like um, a lot of like Dickens' novels as well. Yeah, exactly. It's mm -hmm. Interesting then to obviously come back to them yeah. and read them as we would now read novels. But that's obviously not the way they intended it so yeah definitely yeah exactly <laughs> context <laughs> matters <laughs> oh my gosh really yeah i can <laughs> see that <laughs> oh my god okay so yeah. moving on from just general thoughts then do you want to sort of dive into some of the characters because they definitely are the key part of this reading yeah. experience Definitely. Was there yeah. any characters that you particularly liked or didn't like? Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I'm curious to see your opinion as well because I don't know about you, but um, my opinion kept changing about a uh -huh. few of these characters yeah. all the time. <laughs> my main example, honestly, is Fred because yeah. a lot of people were hating on him on Discord, especially during the first chapters, like up until chapter 20 or something. Mm -hmm. And I kept feeling like Fred had so much potential. Like he definitely is very spoiled and privileged. No doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But also I could see such a potential for some character growth. Yeah. And I think in the end it happened. I yeah. think like he's still not one of my favorite characters by all means, but I do think his case is very interesting to study, yeah. um, especially when it comes to his relationship with Mary. Like, I don't know how you feel about mm -hmm. that. Well, mm -hmm. I feel like um, I actually quite liked Fred. I feel like yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit of a soft spot for like those kind of like well-meaning, but like characters that constantly make mistakes. And um, obviously, I'm not sure if you ended up ever watching the War and Peace miniseries yet. Not yet. Oh my not God, yet. I okay. need to. Well, yeah. when you do, or if you read the book, I feel like Fred is very similar to a young character in War and Peace called Nikolai. And I feel like his arc is very much from being like this very frivolous and selfish young man yeah. and then sort of growing into a much more like mature and considerate character. And I feel like those are two of my favorite characters from both of those books. So oh. I did like Fred. I felt like I had a bit of a soft spot for him. Um, Mm -hmm. So he was enjoyable. I'm trying to think who else stands out for me. Um, Dorothea, I think, obviously stands out because she's the yeah. best character that you really get introduced to. And her storyline is like quite a key thread throughout the entire narrative. And she was one who I felt like I had a lot of ups and downs with because... Mm -hmm. I felt like at the beginning I was kind of interested because she obviously like made a decision that was 
like a bit rogue it didn't seem like yeah. a sensible decision for a young girl to make but she prioritized like intellect in a romantic partner rather than like looks or anything like that so she goes and gets married to this much older guy yeah and then after the marriage she becomes like much more docile and just like a bit of a doormat and she gets a bit more boring and then I feel like towards the end it's like oh she's a bit more interesting again so yeah. I had like ups and downs with her yeah I agree I ended up loving her character actually I think she might have become one of my favorite female protagonists actually yeah. um precisely of how flawed she is as well um just to be clear we're fully diving into spoilers right now right oh, yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. <point>. okay <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm asking because I wanted to say like Kasabans or Kasabans. I still I still don't know how you say his name. Yeah, because I'm only relying on the audio book narrator. Me too. It was like, how does she say it? like Kasaban? I don't know. Yeah, is it Kasabon or Kasabon? I never know. Anyhow, I never feel natural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, I think like his death. This is so sad, but I feel like his death represented some freedom for Dorothea mm -hmm. to finally pursue her dreams. And I feel like before that, she saw marriage as some sort of like an opportunity to help her achieve her goals, yeah. which is so sad because she was filled with all of these emotions and ambitions that she, feel, she felt like she couldn't achieve or pursue because she was a woman. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously a major theme of the novel as well. Yeah. And that's maybe why she seemed so bland at first because she married this guy and she had to take this role of wife and that was it. But you could see that there was so much more inside her I guess and then suddenly when he dies it's like she finally reveals herself I guess to the world I don't know I thought this was yeah really interesting. I feel like she I guess probably is an, a symptom of like just society in general at the yeah. time like that marriage was just expected mm -hmm. and so she didn't really have much guidance and kind of made a wrong decision and then lived to regret it but then yeah like his death offered like a new beginning and a new opportunity for her to really decide like what she wanted to do and the fact that she was then a widow I think also gave her extra freedom because it meant that there was less pressure on her to be able to to have to marry if that makes sense like she then could just exist yeah exactly I agree yeah. Ooh, interesting question. Um, I'm from Italy I've, and I have a C1 level of English. I've started reading books in English in November. Do you think I would understand this book? I'd love to read it. I mean, we definitely have different perspectives on that, maybe, because yeah, Eng yeah English is also not my first language, so I get you. <laughs> um, but I would say mainly if you listen to the audiobook while reading the physical copy at the same time, yeah. it really helps me at least with, especially with this bigger, more dense classics, I would say. So yeah. I would say definitely, yes, you can do it. Just take your time, you know, and listen to the audiobook while reading the physical copy. I think that's the best way to go, at least for me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm going to let you take the lead on that one because obviously. <laughs> I only speak English, so I'm boring like that. Um, <laughs> no, you're not. Come on. Um, I would love nothing more than to be able to speak another language. It's like the bane of my life. I mean, I'm trying I'm to learn German. <laughs> <gasps> That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Although, if you want to give me any Portuguese lessons, I'd be up for that as well. I am totally up for that. I mean, whenever you'd like. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, I'll take you off on that. But yeah, I think with any uh, this book is obviously written. It's in it's in English, but I feel like it's not um, any more difficult to understand than like a modern English book. It's just mm -hmm. written in quite a dense way. There's just a lot of information, but like the yeah. meanings and things. I don't think there's any like too old fashioned words that would be very confusing. So yeah, I agree. Especially after reading things like Shakespeare and everything. Yeah that that's I struggled a whole different with. experience yeah that's <laughs> a whole other level yeah mm -hmm. um okay so Dorothea shall we yes. dive into her character a little bit more and talk about her relationships obviously diving into spoilers we kind yeah. of have a couple of key relationships with Dorothea and I was just kind of interested to know your thoughts on like her connection with Will 
Ladislaw and then like how the book ended whether you wanted that for her all that kind of stuff yeah oh my gosh so many thoughts okay um <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah first of all I have to say Will wasn't my favorite at first mm -hmm. <laughs> but then by the end I loved him because yeah. you know he was the outsider yeah. <laughs> let's just say <laughs> Like no one expecting it expected anything from him. And then all of his discussions about art and everything were beautiful. So I ended up loving him also because he loved Dorothea so much and you could yeah. tell that, but he felt wrong, you know, about loving her. So that, yeah. that whole dynamic yeah, was very complicated. But then mm -hmm. like, I feel like Dorothea's marriage to Kosovan, Kosovan represents like the traditional values of marriage at the time. And mm -hmm. then her marriage to Will represents more of a modern marriage, I guess, yeah. where status and money and class and hierarchies and everything don't matter. They, yeah. they are married because they love each other and they want to be happy. Um, I have to say Dorothea by the end is still a little privileged, obviously, mm -hmm. but that's not the reason at all why they end up together. And I th feel like that's such a big evolution for both of their characters. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely agree. I feel like at first it's difficult to kind of gauge like what um, Will's like morals are and like why he might be interested in Dorothea but then as it yeah. sort of emerges that he's like just really values her and her opinion and like really respects her you mm -hmm. then start to get that more respect for him as a character and I also think that Dorothea again recognises her privilege and she constantly I think tries to make up for that and like even out the playing field like she wants to share her wealth around and she wants to make it so that other people who might be struggling don't have to struggle while she has more than she ever needs and so the fact that she is then obviously willing to give everything up for like a relationship I think is really indicative of like her character growth as well and like her morality because she's got the experience of being married to a very rich man Mm -hmm. and yeah, she exactly. Recognizes that that the status, the house, all of that kind of stuff doesn't bring her happiness, and you need to actually care about the person yeah. um, in order to be happy in marriage. So, mm -hmm. I I was happy with the ending that they got. Although I have to say, there's a few like classic books um, that I just get so frustrated, like what, reading the two mm -hmm. romantic interests like not communicating with each other. <laughs> yeah definitely yeah there was a lot of miscommunication here definitely and it's just like yeah. they're so like vague and they just like don't want to say what they mean and it's like oh just say it <laughs> this book could have been like 300 pages if people would just say what they mean <laughs> yeah exactly yeah that's what i said like what i meant at the beginning where mm -hmm. i felt like sometimes it was maybe a bit too long and we could have had like a much shorter book to say yeah. the exact same story but at the same time that's also how the human race works right yeah. like people sometimes are terrible at communicating especially sure. with the people they love and I also like the fact that the author sometimes talks to us about that and says do not judge these people because you are the exact same as them <laughs> Sure, you also yeah. have all of your flaws you know so I love that but yeah it could get a little annoying sometimes yeah so I, I guess get it. It, maybe it's so frustrating because it's a trait that we see in actual people and it's yeah. just like one of those things that you can see and it's annoying and yet people still continue to do it and like yeah you know, we all do it so it is funny but frustrating to read because you just like I just want you to just get on with it and get to the ending that we all know that we're gonna get <laughs> yeah exactly yeah I Let's get that. this one um don't dislike Will but I don't think that he's that well written and exists mostly to worship Dorothea and redeem her he's basically a manic pixie dream <laughs> <laughs> oh no imagine what george Eliot would say if oh actually. my god <laughs> i know right but to uh, be fair that's what i thought at the start too <laughs> uh -huh. that's why i didn't love him that much because i thought okay boy just <laughs> calm down a little bit um but then in the end like i could see some great character growth there as well because you know he didn't exactly match all of the society's expectations that they mm -hmm. had for him and so that was a new element of the story that I really liked, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I feel like it's also 
interesting because like I think it's nice that he worships Dorothea because she's so young and she got married yeah. to a horrible old man who was just like awful and like put things in his will to spite her and all that kind of stuff like he just was not nice so it's nice that she ends up with someone who actually does really like her yeah um, that's true and then Lucy has a point that I think is very very important which is that most of the time I get annoyed when the female protagonist gets married in the end because I'd rather she just be independent <laughs> it's understandable for the time <laughs> Yeah, I get that. But to be fair, I think she married someone who allows her to be independent. And that's mm -hmm. the point, you know? So. Yeah, I feel like obviously she initially, after her husband passes away, is like, I'm never getting married ever again. I'm just going to like invest money into good things and, you know, be independent. Yeah. But then she obviously ends up marrying for love. But it would be interesting for like someone to. I guess, like, well, I think the problem is that, like, women who would do this would then be considered, like, spinsters and, like, joke yeah. for it. And it's, like, even though she could have been financially independent, then it kind of, like, affects her standing in society. So it is definitely a tricky one. Yeah, I agree. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people saying that it's nice that Will worships Dorothea. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I just we like at first I thought it was maybe his only characteristic. You know, that's why I was a bit confused yeah. about his character. But absolutely, yeah. yeah. And obviously, again, it was difficult to know. Like, is he worshiping her because he actually means it, or is he just like manipulating yeah. the situation? Yeah, but that too. As it turns out, he just likes her a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Which is nice. <laughs> it's nice. Okay. Yeah. So I think. That's Dorothea. We've got plenty That's of Dorothea. <laughs> yeah. Did you have another character or theme in mind that you wanted to move on to next? Oh, okay. I'm yeah, actually it's very it's curious it's about. <laughs> I'm very curious about your opinion on the whole Rosamond and Lydgate's marriage and relationship. Oh, How do you feel about that? <laughs> toxic. I thought it was terrible. Yeah. I, I'm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah <laughs> I'm asking because I love Lydgate he's one of my favorite okay. characters actually mm -hmm. but I don't like Rosamond so that whole dynamic was yeah. very mm. I feel like Rosamond is a very like another privileged character but a character who she's kind of like the antithesis of uh, Dorothea she's like a privileged character who believes that she deserves all of her privilege should always have the nice things and doesn't really care if other people have to suffer in order for her to get her nice things and yeah. like whereas Dorothea is like oh I have all these things I don't need them I wish I could share the wealth around with other people but I feel like Rosamond not so much so don't mm. really like her I like Lydgate because he's kind of like another outsider like Will and he yeah a doctor trying to make his profession he's got like a different attitude to medicine so mm -hmm. he's kind of like struggling to get approval in the society and you, you know he's really passionate about medicine and like that's his like life goal and he has like a cause and he wants to help better humanity and Rosamond is just like I don't care about that I just want you to get a job that makes us loads and loads of money um and it was like particularly in the parts where they were both like lying to each other and like yeah. selling the house and they just kept both like trying to do things behind the other's back and then it was just a whole disaster. Yeah, it was very toxic indeed. And I find it interesting because it's like Lydgate and Dorothea have a lot of the same ambitions like yeah. for, for the farmers and everything. Um, and then it's interesting to compare Dorothea's and Lydgate's marriage because I feel like Dorothea married Kosobin for his intellectual side, like you said before. Mm -hmm. And Rosamond and Lydgate just felt attracted to each other and fell into this romantic idealization of love, I guess. Yeah. And then realized that maybe that's not enough. So it ended up being, like you said, very toxic and just they mm -hmm. kept lying to each other. And it was sad to see because you could tell Leadgate really cared about Rosamond's happiness and he wouldn't do anything without her approval and yeah. then she would take advantage of that yeah yeah I feel like he obviously really wanted to get married to her mm -hmm. and I just feel like it was maybe not so well thought through and actually I mean 
To be fair, so we have a comment here saying that um, first I just watched Fred and then I hated Rosamond. I think their parents just did a horrible job. Oh no. But I do think that Rosamond's dad might have had an idea about making them wait a bit longer for marriage because if they'd have had to wait and not be so like, um, just like thoughtless about just jumping into it, then maybe they might not have gone through with it. But mm -hmm. I felt really sad at the end when you hear that Lydgate like died when he was only like 50 I know that came like, out of nowhere too I know and that Rosamond just got remarried to a guy that was like basically yeah. he just probably should have married in the beginning yeah. um, and it was just sad I was like oh, I liked his ambition I liked the fact that he genuinely wanted to do something because he thought it was for like a good cause rather than because he wanted to marry for like status or you know that kind of thing like he really just had yeah. ambition and she did not support him at all which was yeah exactly good. yeah he wanted to achieve so many great things but then he kept having so much pushback both from yeah. society and his wife and it was so sad yeah and then she, he dies like the finale i was like <laughs> why <laughs> Yeah, it's his only escape from the marriage. <laughs> oh my god, like a Soban, Kosoban. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Paul Lydgate. I liked his like um, little friendship with Dorothea as well. I yeah, me too. Yeah, they were very similar in a lot of ways, actually. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I liked their friendship. And then the way she stands up for him, like when she goes and talks to Rosamond, I loved that scene as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's them. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. Horrible match. Yeah. Okay. The next couple that's jumping to my mind, obviously we have talked about Fred, mm -hmm. but let's talk about Fred and Mary. Yeah, and Mary. Yeah. I loved Mary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, from the start, because she knew she knew what he want what she wanted, and she did love Fred, but yeah. she wouldn't marry him until he changed some aspect of his personality. So she just went ahead with her feelings and her guts, I guess. Mm -hmm. And especially at the start of the novel, she seemed to me the only person with some common sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was really rooting for her. I'm still not sure if I love them as a couple as yeah. much as I love Mary as a separate character, but. Uh -huh. I yeah. feel like Mary as a separate character, she was very strong. She was obviously super, moral and like she had like her own idea about how things should be done and she wasn't going to sway for anyone even though she obviously wasn't very well off and therefore she could have um you know done with finding like a financially viable match and you know her family would have probably benefited from that but she was gonna stick to her idea and I just yeah. feel like I really liked that about her. However, mm -hmm. it was a little bit weird because it was kind of as if they just like decided they liked each other when they were children. And yeah, then that's true. Stuck with that into adulthood. And it was just like, you know, is this actually what either of you want? Or is this just like an idea that you told yourself you should want and therefore you just stick into it? Um, yeah, exactly. So that was a bit weird. But on the mm -hmm. whole, I thought that she did a great job of like, bringing out the best in Fred. Yeah. And then obviously she probably had to kind of like suffer, but <laughs> it's a bit weird. I don't know. I feel like on the whole, there are some really great feminist messages in this novel in terms of like independent thought from women, but it has to be within the context of the time. And like, you know, yeah. there's only so much that they can do, but I do think it is kind of a shame when you constantly have women who kind of have to like undersell themselves because yeah. like, basically a lot of the time the female characters serve just to like help make the male characters better yeah exactly yeah which is a bit of a shame because she's reality a great yeah. character on her own yeah she was i think the only true healthy marriage ended up being dorothea and will mm -hmm. because they, they didn't have like an excuse to get married they just wanted to because yeah. they loved each other and they respected each other and you know they were you know th themselves like they didn't have to pretend or anything like to be superior superior like when it comes to 
men's role or anything will respect Dorothea for what she was. And despite her being a little privileged, obviously, she also had some very humble intentions. She, she just wanted to help people in any way she could. So that ended up being the only true healthy relationship, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I loved Mary, but I'm not sure about her relationship with Fred. Despite them loving each other, it did feel a little rushed. Because yeah. I also feel like Fred never really had the opportunity to like really figure out like who he wanted to be. Yeah, like, exactly. He only lived in his head. Like, first of all, he was kind of living selfishly and just like frivolously. And then after that, when he was like, I need to get myself together, it was all just like, what do I do that's going to make Mary happy? Yeah. And instead of actually thinking like, what does he want to do? What career does he want to follow? Like what path feels right for him? It yeah. was kind of like all led by Mary. And I feel like, it's just not a healthy basis for a relationship because she's sacrificing things for him. He's just doing what he thinks will make her happy. And obviously, as we see in the finale, it turns out all right for them. Like they work mm -hmm. out okay, but objectively, not a healthy basis for a relationship. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Mm. Oh, interesting question. This is kind of going back to Lydgate a little bit, mm -hmm. but someone asked, do we think that Lydgate and Dorothea would be a better match? Mm. I don't think so because they were too similar, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Uh, I'm not sure that would work. Work mm -hmm. well as friends and obviously yeah. like as business partners and things like that, but they're both like very ambitious and like lofty yeah. ideas. So it could be a bit dangerous to have like, I think it is good to have one more grounded person in the relationship to like yeah <laughs> check yeah i agree it's definitely a solid friendship but mm -hmm. not not more than that yeah i agree mm -hmm. yeah okay um, yeah that's what i was saying interesting <laughs> okay. Are both cautionary tales against poor marriage choices. If you're invested in Victorian marriages, I'd recommend Parallel Lives by Phyllis Rose. Ooh. Okay. I like that. Me neither. Yeah. It's interesting. I would not have thought to compare this book to Jane Eyre, to be honest. Yeah, me neither. I, I don't think. I mean, I guess you could see some similarities when it comes to marriage, but I don't think. I feel like Jane Eyre feels a lot more like gothic and dramatic definitely and, like dark whereas this obviously there are like a couple of dark things thrown in there but it feels very like country and like rural life and just a bit different yeah exactly point, for sure. yeah um and lucy always bringing in the great ideas Think yes <laughs> an integral theme of the book idealism and how can we ah oh, she's yeah. so clever that <laughs> you are Lucy <laughs> and that's so true like every single character was always hoping for something bigger than than themselves almost mm -hmm. and then they always ended up disappointed because they expected perfection when people are not perfect and they will never be and there's yeah. no possible way to reach that because it's unattainable yeah so, I feel yeah. like people in this book maybe don't recognize their own flaws exactly then, like, idealistic view of themselves and therefore expect everyone else to mirror idealism within themselves as well and it's just like all very wrong whereas I feel like Will and Dorothea are the like success of the novel because they kind of are like what happens when you let go of those idealisms when you recognize that actually happiness doesn't need to come in like a perfectly packaged form with like the house the money the titles and actually like it can be a lot simpler than that so i feel like that's kind of like yeah. the conclusion to that theme and shows that when you let go of those idealistic like sort of views then you can actually be happy yeah i completely agree i saw this quote actually i cannot remember well where but it said Middle March is basically about how the human race is ridiculous. <laughs> and I was like, that's true. <laughs> that's so true because people in this book are always like 
trying to achieve something that does not exist and they, they cannot yeah. look at, at themselves and truly evaluate who they are and where they want to be and how they're mm -hmm. going to get there you know so i saw that quote and thought that's exactly it <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely yeah um very true i mean an idealistic view of yourself is very common even nowadays yeah. i love when books capture yeah it is very true i feel like though this book feels like a classic and definitely feels of a time that's different to ours there are a lot of the like basic themes that can still be applied and yeah, yeah. idealistic view and expecting perfection is something that we definitely still do now for sure mm -hmm. yeah i agree well that's interesting I think Will has put Dorothy on such a mm. pedestal that it's likely that he'd be disappointed, actually. Mm. Possibly, yeah. I feel like we definitely, obviously, when I'm talking about that being like the conclusion of idealism, I think specifically with Dorothy, because we start the book with her and then kind of like end the book with her conclusion and the fact that she's gone from wanting this like perfect, well, her version of perfect man who's like, intellectual and obviously has money and all that kind of stuff to then experiencing that being disappointed and then going for something quite the contrary but that makes her happy nonetheless so mm -hmm. yeah i agree exactly mm -hmm. kind of like um connecting with idealism i think another thing that i kind of noticed a lot coming up through this book was like the obsession with like how you are viewed by other people in society definitely i feel like half of this book was plot and the other half was gossip <laughs> yeah. and people just talking about what they think happened and how they think people should should act mm -hmm. that was such a major theme as well and i kept laughing because i thought it applied to our days as well, maybe in a more discreet way, I guess. But actually, mm -hmm. some, someone pointed out on Discord, actually, that there was this chapter that was mainly dedicated to what we nowadays call the cancel culture. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, like now it happens, it can happen a lot faster as well because yeah. information can spread on such a wide scale you know thanks to the internet and across such vast platforms that like it, you know it really does like i guess what people think of you matters to an extent even yeah. more than you can care about what people who you've never even met think about you and all that kind of thing um mm -hmm. but yeah i think the chapter that was probably being referred to was when we have like bolstrode and Lydgate and they've been involved is it yeah. Raffles is that the guy's name Raffles yeah I think it is and yeah. there's sort of uh sort of odd circumstances surrounding his death mm -hmm. um, and I felt like obviously Bulstrode's wife was kept in the dark about it and like she had friends come round and they like didn't want to say but everyone else was talking about it and then we also had the same kind of thing happening with Lydgate which again mm -hmm. put extra pressure on his relationship with Rosamond and it was just very like tense because you just know how much power like other people's opinions have even if they yeah. aren't true yeah exactly it really doesn't it's just the importance that people give to others opinions is mm -hmm. so scary because it stops it stops them also from doing like what they would like to i guess and what um it's not exactly expected from society because they are so afraid of being judged and everything so yeah yeah it's tricky mm -hmm. because as well like obviously opinion can be important and it yeah. can be representative of something like powerful and good and like sometimes when something like let's say like going to you know our own era sweeps through the internet spreads information yeah. and it's actually a really powerful tool for sort of like giving like airtime to a really important issue and it can change the narrative and like change the way that people discuss certain topics and it can educate people and in those cases opinion is really important but then there are other occasions where opinions are just shared on not important topics and it can make people change their behavior for no good reason other than just to want to like fit in or be seen as doing like the in thing so it's yeah opinion is such like a a tricky topic i think it is tricky yeah and especially during this time it must have been so much harder to prove your point and your mm -hmm. innocence i guess because once a gossip spread a rumor spread 
then it instantly became the truth and you could do pretty much nothing about it so yeah, yeah. and there were obviously like powerful people whose influence was yeah. like could sway everyone else's opinion and it would make it harder to you know find a place to live you know mm -hmm. people there was less laws in place to like yeah. protect people's rights at this point so like opinion could really sway everything to do with yeah. your life which is kind of scary it is very scary well yeah but yeah definitely agree we are still obsessed mm. with books and oh how gosh. successful people's lives are yeah yeah absolutely no matter how much we deny it but it is true yeah mm. absolutely mm. so basically yeah. we've not changed at all <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's so sad I hope it's not true <laughs> I feel like there's obviously as with any kind of human trait I think that there are positives and negatives to be taken yeah. from it so it's all just about I think being aware of these tendencies to care about these things um you know we yeah. can use it to our advantage or we can let it dictate our lives in like a negative way so i think these things will always be part of human nature but it's just important to keep aware of them and then use that use those parts of our nature to do good mm -hmm. things rather than just to perpetuate you yeah. know negative mm -hmm. basically yeah that's true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's true yeah, Mrs. Bulstrode seemed like a nice character and I kind of felt bad. I did. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Because Mr. Bulstrode was not portrayed as the nicest of characters. He really wasn't. But I loved the I loved the voice the narrator did for him in the audiobook. <laughs> it was so much fun to listen to. I loved it. <laughs> I thought she was really, like to say that it was just a one person audiobook. I, I feel know. Like she did a really good job of like just making all of the characters very distinct. I would definitely recommend the audiobook. Yeah, me too. It's amazing. I think it's thirty six hours long, maybe. Is I that did it? almost have like a miniature heart attack. I think when I saw how long it was, I was like, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we but, did it. It's fine. <laughs> it's over now. Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Trying to think, like running through my map of characters in my head, and who we've mm. not talked about. Let me think. I think we covered like mainly the ones that I like the most and I like the least. I'm yeah. interesting. Like, did you talk about the ones you liked the least? Maybe. Definitely, the character I liked the least out of everyone was Casabon. Yeah. Dorothy. <laughs> Yeah. Just an awful man. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah, um, I agree. I have to say, like, she wasn't like a character that I disliked specifically, but I found Dorothea's sister, Cecilia, a little bit annoying as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say right now. Yeah, I also loved how sarcastic Dorothea was towards the end with yeah. her sister. You know, when Celia mm -hmm. was all like, I, I want to visit you, I want to see your son, but, but I can't because my husband will not allow me. And Dorothea was like, that's fine, don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, she was like, Cecilia was like, oh, you're never going to see me again. And then yeah. Dorothea was like, well, if I don't see well, you, it would be my fault. <laughs> yeah, like, that's okay, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I felt like she was a very, like, selfish character, and especially Definitely. when she had the baby. Oh, my gosh. She was, yeah. like, obsessed with this little baby. What did they call it? Like, little baby Buddha, were they calling him? Yeah, I think that's... It's like, yeah. And um, they were just obsessed with this baby, and, like, she was couldn't understand why Dorothea didn't like the baby as much as she did. Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? She was, like, also saying about her husband needed to let her go see Dorothea because if Dorothea had a baby then she wouldn't know what to do with it and she'd need her little sister to show her what to do and yeah like, calm down <laughs> calm down girl doing it all. <laughs> yeah exactly and I also noticed that I think Celia started with the book like being so happy with her circumstances like her marriage and everything yeah. and she ended up being not so happy by the end yeah. and with Dorothy it was the other way around she started out very unsatisfied and unhappy in her marriage and then everything ended up working well for her so I think at the beginning Dorothea I think was reluctant to allow herself happiness yeah 
Mm-hmm. Like she would have seen it as frivolous to do something purely for making herself happy. Mm-hmm. There had to be some kind of like higher value. So in this case, in her marriage, she like chose the value of intellect. And that was what made her marriage like important and worthwhile. Whereas mm-hmm. I feel like she then realized that that was actually not that important at all. And happiness was way more important. Whereas I think mm-hmm. Celia, she kind of just went purely for like the things that made her happy in the moment and didn't really yeah. think of long-term consequences. So they very much are kind of similar to um, the two sisters in Sense and Sensibility. They kind of are like the different sides of the same coin. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah, there's, mm-hmm. mm. yeah, she basically followed the rule, I guess. She followed all the standards, <laughs> I yeah. guess, for yeah, a woman. Like a very cookie cutter life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is fine. Mm. You do you. You do you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Sir James as well. Like both of them represented, I guess, what you would expect of like a couple. The archetypes, yeah. Yeah, the archetypes, exactly. Like, um, yeah. And like to be fair, they had a fairly unproblematic marriage, so mm-hmm. they did out okay for them. Either that, or the author didn't want to focus on them too much, so yeah, we'll never know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think Celia was an irritating character. Casabon was the character that I actively didn't like, mm-hmm. and then. Yeah, I feel like there were some characters who have kind of blended into the background in my mind and I, like, can't even Mm -hmm. really think about what I think of them. Like, you know, some of the side characters. Like, I feel like Bulstrode, I wasn't really that invested in him. Yeah, me neither. Until his storyline really crossed over with Lydgate. Um, Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about, uh, is it Featherstone who died and then the whole Will situation? Yeah, Featherstone, exactly. Yeah, I I feel like I wasn't that bothered by that either with all of those family members so there's definitely Mm -hmm. storylines that I was more invested in than others but I guess that's natural with so many characters yeah exactly there's a lot of people (laughs) so yeah Yeah. it's natural yeah a few people wanted Dorothea to end up with um what was his name fair brother what was his name the other guy (laughs) They have a no. few characters with like similar names. So there's no Lydgate, oh Ladislaw, and then who was the other L character? Or was it not L? Was it L? Who was the who was the one that Mary nearly married? The one that wanted to marry. Yeah, that's isn't the one yeah, what was his name? That's the one I'm saying, I think. I don't know, a little <laughs> Oh my god. What this had to happen, you know, so many names. It's it's fine. Mm. Um, no. But yeah, I'm bringing that up because a lot of people on Fair Brother, Fair thank brother you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Brother. Said, okay, that's yeah, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> um, a lot of people were very invested in his storyline. Mm-hmm. I I wasn't actually at all. I don't know. No, I enjoyed the fact that he was like invested in helping bring Mary and a uh, mm-hmm. friend together, and he like put his own. Um, what's it called like his own benefit aside and like decided yeah. to focus on them and their happiness and I thought he was a nice character but I wasn't particularly invested in him yeah, outside neither. of that storyline yeah oh the other L name is Lowick <laughs> there you go yeah there's just so many oh like they're not that similar but in a book with so many names I'm like ah. oh my gosh Kira once you read Crime and Punishment just Get rid. <laughs> it's I'm a sure. whole adventure. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So many but, names. Yeah. You need to like draw out a family tree or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, seriously. Yeah. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. Okay. What else? What else? It's one of those situations that we're in where I'm like, there's so many different directions this could go in, but yeah. my mind is like, <laughs> yeah, so many thoughts. Gosh, yeah. Aside from like the 
I guess, themes in terms of relationships that we've touched on? Were there any other themes that kind of stood out to you that you wanted to talk about? Mm. I like the message in the end, like especially because we have a bit of an open ending with Dorothea when it comes to her achieving all of her plans for the farmers um, with the cottages and everything. Yeah. We never know exactly if she achieves that, but I like that because it's like the author is telling us, is telling good people and ordinary people to never stop doing good, I mm -hmm. think. And it's never something that she really lingers on throughout the book, I don't think, but it's always there somehow. Yeah. And I really like that. Yeah, I feel like as well, there are a lot of characters like Fred obviously just like gets himself into just like a standard job working on a farm mm -hmm. and yeah. that makes him and Mary happy and then mm -hmm. Dorothea gives up like a you know fancy house and just gets married but she still has that ambition and I feel mm -hmm. like a theme running throughout is like you say like you don't have to be doing something on like a huge scale for it to have an impact and that you can mm -hmm. make a positive change in so many different ways. Yeah exactly that's another thing like how an individual moron, moral choice matters to everyone around you. Mm -hmm. You can truly make a difference with just tiny choices you make every single day. And yeah. Yeah. And then equally with things, I think especially with Fred, you see how a small choice that's bad on your behalf, yeah. like in regards to like money, for example, mm -hmm. has then the capacity to cause a lot of pain for a lot of people even if it just seemed like a small decision in the split moment so yeah it really goes a long way for showing how the little things really add up and I guess like in a study of provincial life where we're looking at a community it is going to be like the little things that make such a difference to everyone's existences rather than like those big scale changes that might be happening across the world yeah exactly yeah i really like how the book focuses on this time and this place and these people you know because yeah. we have so many different characters from different backgrounds and with different goals and expectations of life i guess yeah where yeah they are all trying to achieve something that sometimes it's more realistic than others but mm -hmm. yeah i really like that yeah that's kind of made me think, I cannot remember the character's name, but obviously mm. there's a, a large part of this book that's focusing on like voting and like mm. trying to create change for parliament. And yeah. um, there's this one character, I think it's Mr. Brooke, who's talking to the um, owner of like the shop in the town. Yeah. He's like trying to encourage this guy to like make a big change and vote for someone new. But this guy's like, look, I've got a family to feed a house to look after, a shop to run. I need to know exactly what I'm going to be voting for and how it's going to impact this life. I don't care about changing everyone else's lives. Like, and you know, obviously now we can look at our votes as like an opportunity to help change the world or to, you know, like make things happen. But mm. actually your vote is also an opportunity to do what you think is best for like you and your circumstance. And I think this like small community highlights that as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, love that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> any other points you want to discuss or anyone watching, if you've got any questions, yeah. any points you'd like us to touch on, um, then do pop them in the chat. I definitely feel like my thoughts on Middlemarch are starting to become clearer now that I've like, discussed them. <laughs> yeah it's always nice to discuss them and mm -hmm. think about the book yeah yeah um yeah i think that was pretty much it i don't know um, yeah i think that covers it for me i feel like we've mostly talked about all of the different characters mm -hmm. um, yeah okay um <laughs> red middle march about three years ago i thought i remembered it well <laughs> to you i'm realizing i don't <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, I think it's a big commitment to read again. Definitely. Um, and I have to agree, I can only imagine that, you know, the longer that I haven't, you know, like now I've read it, the more time that passes, I think it's not going to be a book that really stays fresh in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but that's okay. It's okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, would you read anything else by George Eliot? Absolutely, yeah, I really want to. What's her other book? which is also very well known. The Mill of the Floss? 
Oh, yeah, exactly. I really want to read that yeah. one. I read yeah. that one at university. That was the George Eliot book that I read mm. in my Victorian literature module. And I enjoyed mm. that. I would say that I enjoyed that more than this. And that mm. one focuses more so just on like, um, it's focused on two siblings, starts in childhood and like runs right through adulthood and kind of like shows the changing of their relationships, but also in... Um, again like a similar town setting and again it kind of shows like how important everyone's mm. opinions are and all that kind of stuff but I think it's a smaller cast of characters so I found it a bit easier to follow. Interesting yeah I need um, to read that one. And then mm. Adam Bede, never heard of that one but maybe mm. that. if it's shorter than middle March then I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I, I mean yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. I myself think I might prefer a novel that focuses on Dorothy's mm. storyline. I do think something that happened more in classics is that they would have like a larger cast of characters and you'd be following like a big epic thing. Yeah. And again, like you mentioned at the beginning, uh, it would have been published in like shorter segments. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I think we're used to novels that focus on like a key protagonist, maybe two maximum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Adam Bede is shorter than Middle March. It is. <laughs> I mean, that's not hard to do, to be fair. No, this is true. <laughs> it's so long. Yeah, so long. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, if we don't have any more questions, then I think that will bring this massive oh my God. saga to an end. <laughs> Yay, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that we read this together oh, and that we had other people joining us as well because I genuinely don't think I would have done it otherwise. So we've yeah. managed it. We've ticked this big fat book off of our TVRs. <laughs> <laughs> That's an accomplishment. <laughs> it really is. Props That's to us. <laughs> one of the two books that we said we were going to read together this year. So we've done that. And then we have... It by Stephen oh King God. waiting for us in autumn. So that's exciting. Yes, it's very exciting. Also terrifying, but I'm excited. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, oh, do you have a favorite quote? I have to say I did not really mm. tap quotes um because I was listening in on the audiobook for most of the book. I just kind of let them all wash over me. <laughs> yeah, I did the same actually. I just really liked the author's voice in mm -hmm. general, especially when she talked to us about the characters and mm -hmm. telling us like to be patient with them, that everything would be okay, and that they're just people making mistakes and being flawed like everyone in the world. So mm -hmm. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, yes. with <laughs> that, shall we finish up? Sure. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us. This has been such a fun discussion and yes. probably my favourite part of the whole buddy read. I always enjoy getting together at the end and just like... Yes. So, <laughs> it's amazing. ever so much. And like we said, we're doing It by Stephen King in September or October. So keep an eye out yeah. if you want to tackle <laughs> another big book with us. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Right. Thank you all for watching. See you later. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>